Hey friends, how's it going? So today is going to be the Q&A video. So I got a lot of questions in this Q&A video uh, from you guys. So I did answer a few questions. Some of them kind of overlap. So I kind of picked out the questions that were really good and kind of give you guys an overall view of who I am. Now I do have a special surprise at the end of this video. I will announce the winner and I will also announce something else. So uh, yeah. Now I do want to mention to you guys that I I did get an article printed out uh, from the magazine called She Magazine. So I will link that down below. It's basically an article that they wrote about me. Um, it talked about my process of becoming a YouTuber and just about my life and stuff that I like and things like that. So I'm really honored and thankful for the opportunity to get an, you know, an actual article written about me. So I thought that was really nice. And I want to say thank you to everyone who has been supporting me. I did reach 250,000 subscribers. So I want to say thank you guys so much. It is happening over here for your girl and I am super thankful for everything So that's why you should wait to the end of the video to find out what's going to happen next week So guys if you want to hear more about me why don't you stay tuned and keep on All right, guys. So this first question was asked by Alyssa Alina. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I'll actually insert the names in here for you guys. So the question was, what is or was the best part of having a sister or sisters growing up? So you guys know I am the middle child and we're three sisters. Now that's on my mom's side. On my dad's side, I actually have a few brothers, um, but I grew up with my sisters. So being the middle child and having two sisters was great. I feel like being middle of three is great. So my younger sister, sister looks up to me a lot so you know she's always like she always chilled behind me as a kid um, and like with her like she looked up to me I mean I didn't make the best decisions growing up but I did the best I could to show some type of example she was always the great child so she did everything like so good um, but you know I learned from her and she learned from me so I liked having someone as a sidekick sometimes my older sister I looked up to her as well too she was kind of like the start of everything she usually led everything on she's like the first one and you know I looked up to her she went to high school together so you know I was always like hanging on her back and stuff like that even though she really really gave me and my younger sister a hard time growing up because she was just so mean I think like a few years you know after like like when we got into her, like our 20 like mid 20s like 24 25 she kind of softened up a little bit and became more of a loving sister not even a loving sister because she's always been a loving sister but she kind of softened up in the um within the recent years and we've become like really I mean like us three we're like the squad so we've kind of become really 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 close and I don't know it's always having someone to go to I don't necessarily tell them everything some things I keep to myself you know but it's always good to have someone to run to if something happens and I either have this one or that one so it always works out and plus I love them so much because we're all D so it's Darlinda, Daniela, and Dominique so it's just so much fun having them as sisters. So this next question was actually asked by Mariah Walker so her question was how do you balance out being a nurse and doing YouTube slash being an influencer so um, within the recent years I've kind of like you know minimized my work in nursing just because I had to go back to school or I want to go back to school so I've been kind of like working part-time as a nurse because in Connecticut in order to keep your license active you have to work a certain amount of hours and I believe that's like that in most states don't quote me on that but so I need to actually work so I kind of work part-time and then sometimes I'll go ahead and do like a full week or I'll do like my regular 12-hour shifts I do have a few jobs guys and some of them stay per diem which is a good thing about nursing I like the fact that I can work and I don't I could go to work if I want to and I don't have to go to work so that's the flexibility that I'm in love with about it and I've always done per diem I've always had like always like a solid job and always picked up per diem I have like this worth ethic that's like crazy even if I make Making good money I'm still gonna keep going to work I don't know if that's an island thing I just like to accumulate money it's like something in my blood I kind of feel like I get that from my dad because my dad was a super hustler and also my mom as well so even if I work a full-time job I will still have three other jobs on the side doing per diem because honestly and truly I like to keep myself preoccupied I physically like to like work now I do like to go out and like when I go out I party but I really need to work and I like to work I like to interact with patients and stuff like that that's the fun thing about that um, so recently like I said I kind of minimized some of my uh, nursing hours and then I'm going to school so I picked up some school hours now YouTube has definitely 
definitely compensated tremendously. So I've been able to balance out, you know, still working and I use my working money, you know, I still work so I can get some money and pay my bills and still use some of my YouTube money. So I'm kind of working still in that mindset of I want to have like three or four jobs still. So in theory, I still have like four or five jobs and I'm kind of just mixing them together. Right now, I'm kind of getting into the, you know, mix of things. So it's all balancing out. So I'm not kind of like washed out or run out. In the beginning, I was having issues trying to balance everything, but I kind of mastered it a little bit and I'm not over exhausting myself anymore. And I'm just doing what I can do. And I'm, I'm like really not trying to push myself further than I can anymore. So it's giving me more time to relax and enjoy the moment. So I thought this was a good question. So this question came from I am Corey Rose. So she asked, how do you handle negative feedback on something that you love to do? For example, I love the beauty industry in and out, but to hear negative comments about something I've worked so hard on is one of the hardest things in my career. How do you deal with it? P.S. I totally love you and your confidence. True inspiration. Thank you, girl. So now negative comments are kind of like a major thing. So, not major things. So, mm, no, not really major. It's like a major controversy on uh, YouTube in general. And it's funny because I was saying this the other day. It'll be so funny and if Instagram actually gave the like and dislike button. I wonder how many people's feelings will get hurt off of Instagram the same way people's feelings get hurt off of YouTube. Now, I've never been someone that's really been into uh, caring that much about the likes and dislikes. I, I Honestly, it does matter when it comes to the analytics and stuff like that. But I don't have issues with that because my numbers kind of are rationalized. Um, but the issue sometimes you'll get is like negative comments that, you know, people leaving like outrageous things or obvious things that you know about yourself. And the thing about it is like, I'm completely honest with myself. I know what I am. I know what I look like. I know, you know, I wear wigs. I know I wear makeup. I know I look different without makeup on versus what I look like with makeup on. Yeah, I get it. If I was somebody coming on here and being fake and acting as if I didn't know those things about me, of course I would be mad when you guys leave those rude comments in the in the comment section. But because I know that, I don't really care. Like, you know, some sometimes you guys will comment and leave, you know, comments that are constructive criticism. Those I take into consideration. Not all the time am I going to take what you guys say and then take it to heart and be like, oh my God, I need to change who I am. First of all, I know who I am. So therefore I'll take what you say and, you know, take into consideration and, you know, maybe think about it, but that doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to take what you say and run with it. People can come on here and say the craziest things. It's kind of like, you know, you could post the video up like for a minute or not even a minute. It'll be 40 seconds that the video has been up and you've already received one dislike and some rude comment. You know, that used to happen all the time and I used to wait to watch to see that. So I kind of picked up the trend like, you're always gonna have a few haters there's gonna be a few people that are not gonna like you and it's just something that honestly after you know doing this for like a while and being really consistent for the last two years the first year I was so annoyed and I wanted to you know just come at people but then I said to myself why am I gonna waste my gigabytes waste my energy to just type something up just to combat you for what you wasted all your time and energy to be negative that's your business. I'm going to waste my time and energy being real positive and living my best life. So that's how I think about it every day I wake up. I'm like, you know what? I don't care. You can say what you want. I'm still going to do me. I'm still going to wake up every day. I'm still going to be dumb. And that's the best I can be. So it's just after a while, you kind of build that backbone. You need, honestly, YouTube, you need to have a strong backbone because people will really come for you. So for the ones that do want to start channels and stuff like that, really take time to consider because there's a lot of back backlash in the background but you know thank god i'm just like it is what it is at this point all right so you guys was asking some really good questions so this one is a pretty good question so this one is from darian smith so darian smith asks i love all your videos they are so simple and straight to the point my question is how do you manage to save up to travel and still be able to pay uh your bills thanks all right so this year I did a lot of traveling. I did not vlog a lot, but I, I vlogged pretty the pretty significant trips that I went on that were good. Some of them I wanted to enjoy, like I went on a sister's trip. I went on a an extra vacation. I did go to some, I did a lot of extra stuff this summer, um, but those I wanted to keep them personal, and intimate, just because I didn't want to make it uh, too much. I did show you guys Thailand, Paris, France, and stuff like that. Paris, France. <laughs> wow, London and France. And I showed you guys Thailand, so. Those are major. So, um, the way I do things is okay because I still work as a nurse. I still have a good 
it's salary like I still make pretty good money like pretty good money able to pay bills like like my thing is I like to live in a nice house I like to live in a good comfortable place have good running water have like all the good amenities and stuff like that I like to have a car garage I have to like, like to have a washer and dryer and stuff like that so I focus my money and spending at this point right now on things that are like my house like where I live and I do drive a pretty expensive car nice car and you know those are things that you work towards like when I first started nursing this is funny not even funny because this is how you you know work your way up when I first started nursing I was going to nursing school and I had a 1992 Nissan Altima and I bought that because I had some money got into a car accident and I got some money for the car that got totaled so I bought this car I drove that car until the wheels fell off I was working as a nurse driving this piece of crap car until the wheels fell off I saved all my money as all my checks and the nursing checks were all saved I had racks on racks on racks on racks finally had it dumped that car got my first Lexus and that was like my dream car getting Lexus was my dream car so that was the first car I got after that I ended up trading that and I got this new one right now which I freaking love so those are things that I actually care like not care about because they're materialistic but those are things I feel like are more things that I would pay for that I need like a good home and a car to drive a car with good tires blah 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 now because I you know I do a lot of tutorials and stuff like that I get sent products now if I'm getting sent products like clothing and hair and stuff like that I don't necessarily Necessarily need to go out and buy stuff anymore so I utilize the things that I get I'm not I'm not I'm really cheap to be honest with you guys I'm not gonna go out and spend money on clothes when I'm getting clothes from sponsorships and stuff like that so a lot of the money that I make now um, when I still go to my nursing jobs I use that money to uh, supplement the bills like pay my car note my insurance my rent and stuff like that and a little bit of miscellaneous items so my nursing money at this point can cover about 60 to 70 percent of my in of my um, living so the money I make from YouTube and stuff like that which will be like uh, you know sponsorships third party making all that kind of stuff like Google and all that kind of stuff I usually save eight I usually save 75 to 90 percent of that money so 75 to 90 percent of my all my YouTube earnings throw all the whatever part third party and all that kind of stuff I save that money and I focus all my working money on my living now when I plan for trips and stuff like that even before I started making a lot of sponsorship money on YouTube I had a good in I had a good save a pretty hefty savings account before I started so I pre-plan trips and stuff ahead and I used to every time I plan a trip I do payment plans so it's like $300 every two months or something like that so then it'll just be it would be easier that way because you have time to save up your money and actually pay for the trip and split and even when I want to go on like a quick trip what I usually like to do is wait on Wednesday night I think it's Wednesday night and I'll go on Expedia and I'll just buy my trip my tickets that way so I'll get like a round trip ticket and the tickets on like Wednesday night I believe it is is usually like really cheap so I'll always get like I can go to New Orleans like last year I went to New Orleans I think I paid like $242 for a round trip ticket and I stayed there for like four night four days so you can really find that like, good prices on Wednesday nights and even if you're planning something like overseas like to London or like going to Paris you can find really really good prices on certain nights so I always do that when I'm planning like a quick trip and stuff like that so I kind of pre-plan my things and then kind of organize like okay if I if I met this goal of what I want to save this month, then I can just spend this much money on something that I like. I don't buy designer stuff. I don't buy like expensive things because that's not really what I'm into. So what I'm into is traveling, enjoying my life. I like to have a nice dinner every, you know, every two weeks I like to have a nice dinner. Um, I like to go to like amusement parks, I like to go to museums and stuff like that. So I like to do things, um, you know, little fun things. I treat myself, you know, once in a while to nice things. So. That's basically what I do. So that's how much, I mean, like, that's how I try to save my money. Like, I have goals. Like, I want to buy a house soon. Um, I want to finish paying, like, I'm trying to finish paying a student loan because I'm going to start a new student loan. So I'm trying to finish one off now. So, um, yeah. So that's basically what I do. Like, I've been doing that for a while and it's been working for me. So it's just keeping up with the things like I don't need to spend money on extra stuff when I already have it. And that's how my mind is working now because I want to save for the future. Yo, I feel like this video is going to be an extra long video, so I will insert when I announce the winner because I know some of you guys going to be like, she talks too much, but don't you want to get to know me? But I do feel like I'm jaw jacking a little bit, so I'm going to kind of, you know, pick up the speed a little bit, but still give you the full deets. So this question was asked by It's Day D. So it's bruh. I always admire your face. You're so pretty and have a bomb ass shape. Thank you. 
I just want to know how was it growing up as a kid because I was bullied a lot for being dark skinned and if you have to how did you deal with it and have all the confidence now okay all right yeah mm -mm -mm -mm. I feel like um, dark skin is always like a controversy um, people don't even really like talking about this I, I don't know why um, so I grew up in Connecticut and I live in a pretty good uh, city where it's kind of like a really good mixed population it is populated by a lot of Caucasians but it's like a really good family kind of knit place meaning like I went to high school that was super mixed and everyone got along like you could met, you could talk to anyone. You could sit at just about anyone's lunch table and you'd be cool. I mean, I was a cool person. I talked to everybody in high school. It didn't matter what race you were or whatever. I was a pretty cool person in high school. Um, so the thing about it is like over here, they didn't really make a big deal about, you know, like a black, you know, like dark skin, light skin or whatever. Everyone's like either black, white or Hispanic or whatever it is or Asian. That's how they categorize everyone here. They don't really say like, oh, you know, she's the light skin black girl. They didn't do that. I mean, I didn't grow up with those things. I kind of feel like that's a new thing right now but one thing I always remembered um, growing up is when I used to date like a lot of people outside of my race so I used to date you know outside of my race I dated like a, a lot of Hispanic and Caucasian men I used to date some a lot of them so um, growing up and dating people like that I've always and it's weird this is a comment that you guys will probably be so offended and now that I think about it I'd be so offended now if someone said that to me I'd probably slap someone in their face if they said that to me on a first date so a lot of people would say to me oh um you know you're pretty for a black girl i let me tell you something i know you guys are gonna drop the what the f bombs up in this video i've been it's been said to me and it's been said to me maybe three times from someone of the opposite race of mine and it's they said to me you're pretty for a black girl now back then i kind of thought about like what what does that mean what is being pretty for a black, so black girls are just not pretty? I'm telling you guys no lie. I don't know if it's just this area that's like that, but I feel like there's just, in certain, it, it could be in any town you live in in the United States that you're going to get some, you know, some, you know, jackass type of stuff like this. So, but that's the question, honestly, dating outside of your race in this area that I've you know, I've heard that that's been said to me a few times. So that's the only thing I dealt with. Like people out here, they're pretty cool, you know, like, you no know, one's like, oh, that black girl. No one really says, like, kind of things like that around here. Because everyone's, you know, they real, you know, keep their mouth shut. Because they know that, you know, you say it to the wrong person and it's just going to be all hell. But, yeah, that's the only interaction that I've really had when it's come to, um, you know, like, you know, dating someone or having interaction with people, you know, you know commenting about my skin honestly I feel like in the recent years it's gotten worse I kind of feel like now they're making dividers with black people like okay black is the race now you don't have to split blacks light skin black dark skin black yo black is black like we all have melanin we're all melanin popping I hate that they're dividing us it's really annoying and I kind of feel like they kind of shows a lot like even through YouTube they divide the dark skin versus light skin and you know some you know they'll say you know the lighter version the lighter YouTube the lighter uh, black YouTubers will get better sponsorships versus the dark skin. There's a whole controversy going around. Let me tell you something. I don't care what category you slap me in. I'm black. You're black. We're black. That's all I got to say. And that is it is what it is. I really hate that right now. That's becoming, they're trying to split us a little bit. But I'm trying to stay positive and I'm trying to stay, I'm black. You're black. We're black. Let's stay together. And that is what it is. See, I'm telling you guys, this is how I know that I'm jaw jack and I have to get a sip of my drink. So... You guys are probably going to hear the cricket in here because the cricket is always making noise. And you know why? Because I always leave this window open because it gets so hot in here. Now, the next question was asked by the Southern Bell 323. Now, she asked me if I have a Visalign. So you guys keep asking me about my teeth. You guys are telling me my teeth are like really white. I'm not sure if it's like the lip gloss or the lipstick that I wear or whatever it is, but my two teeth do come out really bright and white. I do use Sensodyne um, to brush my teeth if you guys wanted to know, and I brush pretty like crazy, and I do get my teeth checked every six months, so I guess those are the reasons why my teeth stay so white. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So let's go to the next question, guys. That's a quick question. I'm just going to add a few of these little quick ones in here so you guys can get like a little bit more of some understanding. Uh, someone asked me, do I ever bleach the knots on any of my wigs? And this was Life Size Barbie Stacy. Um, no, I have not ever created a video bleaching knots. Um, I do want to do videos on that, but I want to test a closure out first before I try. I have watched videos from Peak Mill. She's done some videos. She's great at that. So I've been trying to learn from her um, and a couple other YouTubers have been trying to learn how to bleach knots. So once I kind of master it, then I'll come out and show you guys how I bleach knots, guys, honestly and truly. So the next question was from TP Gift. Now she asked me, um, what is your five-year plan and what are you going back to school for? Okay, so my five-year plan, so I'm 27 now. Let me not count how old I am. I'm 27 now, so let's see, 27, 28, 20, oh, 20, mm, God, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 32. Oh, wow, that was so stupid. Arithmetic. Okay, so 32 five-year plan. So my five-year plan is to basically just live my best life, number one. Um, no, I'm just joking, but that is obviously going to be one of the things I need to do and continue to do. So my five-year plan is like within the next two to three years, I would like to actually get married. Um, hopefully that happens. Oh, hopefully I get a ring um hopefully that works out um but that is kind of something you know i hope happens within the next two to three years i used to always say that oh my god i want to have a kid by before my first kid before i'm 30 and stuff like that but those are things you know are that just need to happen um i'm not trying to force anything yes i am in a relationship and we talk about stuff like that which is great it's definitely great and for the first time ever that i'm actually in a relationship with someone who actually talks about a future with us together see growth I had I was dating someone before who was terrible so yeah so it's nice that me and this guy actually talk about that so hopefully that happens now I am going back to school and I um, want to go back to school because I want to go back to school to become an APRN or a nurse practitioner um, I kind of been liking this kind of like independent life being like my own like you know business uh, woman now doing my own thing on YouTube and still maintaining pretty much you know a job working for the man um, but I want to kind of venture off and do nonprofit stuff. I want to work private. I want to do like a private practice because nurse practitioners and APRNs, they actually can write prescriptions out. They actually function as a doctor without actually having a doctor's an MD behind their name. So they pretty much work as a physician. Um, so I would like to do nonprofit, maybe work for Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood, I used to go there when I was like, like 19 to get birth control and stuff like that. And uh, the staff, the actual people who perform the abortions, did a lot of women's health and stuff like that. They were APRNs and nurse practitioners. So I always liked that, you know, women's health. I'm, I don't know, I've been really interested in that, you know, a lot of women health you know pre pregnancy planning and stuff like that I like that kind of thing you know protecting women from STDs HIV and stuff like that I'm really into like you know women's health now I don't know if it's because I'm on YouTube and you know it's just you know having this lifestyle view you know I've been really focused on my lifestyle and stuff like that now so I really want to get into that type of stuff like women's health really caring about the woman's body soul and spirit you know having doing like group meetings and stuff you know inspirational talks and things like that so I really do want to become a nurse practitioner for that reason. I really want to be involved and I really would like to do nonprofit because, you know, there's not a lot of people that have insurance that can't really afford to go see or get the proper health care and stuff. And nonprofit agencies definitely, you know, help out a lot. And I want to work for something like that. Even a local clinic would be great. And yeah, so I definitely want to do that. So that's my kind of future goal. Then that's what I'm trying to work towards right now. So I'm just working on it slowly. YouTube has definitely helped assist me going back to school right now so I'm definitely very blessed and very thankful for the opportunity of this moment right now because if I wasn't doing this right now I would not be able to go back to school like this like honestly. so this next question is definitely a long one and there are several questions in one so this one is from it's Lexis so this is probably gonna give you guys the most information about me so the first question is how old are you I'm 27 uh, do you want kids I do want kids I think I want about like four to five kids I'll probably be, end up having six but like a good amount three how about I say this three and up three to six 
please. You know what? I'll give what I'll, I'll take whatever God gives me, honestly and truly. Um, do you plan on getting married? Yeah, I do plan on getting married. Hopefully, it happens. Um, I am in a relationship, so I'm crossing my fingers that it'll lead uh, to a future, you know, nuptials. Because this is honestly, I really feel like this is probably like the love of my life. Um, are you straight? Um, I am bi. I classify myself as bi, um, so I like boys and girls. Um, I had relationships with girls before. I've been with girls and I have um, been with guys, but I've been with more guys and currently I'm dating a guy and I'm pretty much satisfied, 100%. Um, where are you from? I'm from Connecticut. Um, how were you raised? Now, how were you raised? This is kind of like a weird question. How was I raised? I was, ra does that mean like with like household wise or like how was I raised? Was I raised? I was raised with my mom, dad, and my sisters. And then 2005, my father passed away, and my mom raised us by herself. And she did a hell of a good job. Um, I guess that's to answer the question, I think. Uh, what's one thing you would change about yourself? One thing I would change about myself is I would be more um, detail oriented or like, like, not even like I would just listen more, you know, and pay attention to details more. I used to be really detail oriented before, but now my mind is so cluttered with a lot of things. I've kind of lost focus of like really focusing detail wise. I used to be really good at that. So I'm trying to get back into really focusing on stuff and really paying attention because I kind of feel like my mind is so jumbled up with a lot of things now that I kind of slip up a little bit. Um, what's my biggest pet peeve? Um, my biggest pet peeve is uh, people who crunch like really loud. Okay, I love mukbang channels and I was considering doing a mukbang because I like to eat and I can do like a mukbang channel still like eating healthy at the same time and if I want to cheat I will. Um, but I hate on mukbangs and people over exaggerate the crunch. I honestly feel like mukbangs are natural eating videos but people like just crunch on purpose. It's like it's a forced crunch. I hate that. That's like my biggest pet peeve. Like it's like silent and you have someone that puts like one chip in their mouth and they make the biggest crunch i just want to freaking like you know i get so freaking pissed yeah okay biggest insecurity um let's see my biggest insecurity would be my fupa so you guys know I've, I've lost like weight a good amount of weight um i went from 210 pounds to 168 pounds currently now um so i've lost like 42 pounds so i've had like weight loss issues for a long time and i've mentioned this in my weight loss videos so i've been like really really weight loss kind of up and down my entire life so i have like a lot of loose skin in my abdomen so um it's something i don't like because i kind of feel like it's always a focus Focus. and even if you guys don't see it I always see it and I just hate the fact that I always have to that's like always a reminder that you know you've lost the weight but hey I'm not going away I'm always gonna be here ha 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 so it's like almost always a reminder that that thing is just never going away so it's, it's just that's my biggest insecurity and I hope you guys understand what I mean um, this next question is would you ever get plastic surgery girl I've been there and done that yes um, when was the last time you cried? I, the last time I cried was like yesterday. I was listening to like a song and I got really emotional. Lately, I've been really, really emotional. I'm not preggers. My mom thinks that someone is, but it can't be me. It can't. No baby doms right now. But I've just been like really like, I'm like an emotional person anyways. I went to see a psychic in New Orleans and she was like, I'm an emotional person. As soon as she said that, I started crying. Is that not embarrassing? It's like whatever ma mystical spirit came on me and I just started crying as soon as she said that to psychic like come on like I am a really emotional person I've been crying a lot lately about like goals like every time I reach like some type of goal like I cry like like just like I wake up like one day I was driving my car and I was like thinking to myself like yo is this real life bro like this is just me I'm just dumb like what like sometimes I'll just randomly cry now but it's not crying from sadness I'm just crying because I'm really happy like really really happy right now just happy in general now the next question is uh, when is your birthday my birthday is actually December 27th I was born December 27 1990 Whew. 
Do you believe in zodiac sign meetings? I do believe in zodiac sign meetings. I, I believe sometimes like the day that you read it, it's always in sync with the moment. And I feel like that's always ironic. Like it's like you're, you're like in a moment or like a flunk or like a feeling. And it's like that perfect zodiac sign or that moment or that day that zodiac sign matches your inner spirit. I kind of feel like that always happens. It's kind of cool, that concept. And it's kind of creepy at the same time. So I do read it, but I'm not like a big freak about stuff like that. I am a stone collector and when I move I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna set up my stones and everything in my new apartment so you guys will see that but I do believe in stuff like that I think it's always true sometimes it's just like the stars align right um let's see what's your clo uh your clo closest dream job Oh, okay, so my dream job, like I said before, would be uh, being an APRN or a nurse practitioner. And honestly, if I don't end up doing that, I'll probably end up giving Botox injections in an upper uh, east side or upper west side uh, dermatologist office. Yeah, that's where the coin is at. I think so. And it's like, you know, easy money, chill, knock them in. And that's it. So that's probably something I end up doing too. And you can even do it private. If you get malpractice insurance for like $2 million malpractice insurance, which is not a lot monthly, you gain the premium. It's like it covers you for $2 million worth of damage. You can actually practice privately as long as you're um, licensed and you took like a, you know, uh, that actual certificate for that injection thing. You can actually do that too. Um, let's see. Uh, what do you, what do you look for? in a life partner okay like in a partner so in a okay so before i'm i was dating the guy i'm dating now i was dating a real jerk off type of guy someone who wasn't really paying attention to me who didn't really care about me um when i met this guy he actually gave me what i needed and i never thought i was going to get it that easy to be honest with you when i first met him i kind of told him what i wanted and what i was looking for so this time around i was really straight up like i'm not around for jokes anymore like you want it or you don't that's how i came off i came off really straightforward i told him what it was and what it was gonna be um you trying to like you know you're just trying to get it or whatever cool i'm not down for that because first of all your ass lives all the way in new york i'm not coming over there just for one night and then just coming back home it's not even worth it at that point i could just find somebody here so i told him straight up what i wanted we talked it through he sounded like he was with it and guess what he's still with me now so he was with it so like i said i had bad experiences before i had a terrible experience before in a relationship so this time when I was walking to this relationship, I was determined, not even walking to the relationship, just talking to him off the, off, like straight up when I was talking to him, I let him know, if you're not like trying to talk to me, like you're not trying to talk to someone, you're not looking to, you know, invest in someone, don't waste my time. Like the thing about it is like when you start finding yourself and you start, you know, seeing your worth. And at that time I had dropped the loser I was dating before. And I, when I dropped that guy I was dating before, I don't know what happened to me. I just I just felt like this 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 like wind or like this weight just lift off me. And I honestly felt like I knew who I was at that point. I really feel like that relationship dragged me to the ground. I really wasn't myself at that point. When I left that relationship, I became who I am now. I'm telling you guys. So I would say if you're gonna jump into, if you're gonna try to date people or you're looking for a partner, make sure you tell them what you want and know what you want and know what you have to offer. Number one, make sure you have you have something to offer. So don't go in there trying to deter, uh, you know, trying to ask for all these things. Make sure you got your shit together before you go making your demands or looking for people with specific things. Because if you're not there, you can't expect someone to be at that level if you're not even at that level. That's number one. Um, do you have a 10 year plan? I already answered that question, so I'm not really gonna answer that one again. You guys already know what it is. You know my my five year, 10 year plan is to be comfortable, rich, wealthy, happy. Happy, you know what, happy. Happy is what I plan to be in 10 years. I'm just, I just wanna be happy, alive, breathing, family good, friends good, y'all good, everybody good. Okay, and oh, that's it. That was the last question. So that was her question. That was actually pretty freaking long, but I hope that was good. So this question was asked by Myra Edwards. So this is going to be the last question that I'm going to answer. Now, I do plan on doing another Q&A because I actually had fun doing this one. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope so. So she asks, what stores do you suggest that make cheaper, more flattering clothes for plus size 20 somethings that don't have a flat stomach? I'm trying to look cute and snatch. So 
Um, let me see. Now, I'm going to say this one because I know reliably, like, I used to shop plus size and I shop regular size from this company. So, Rainbow Shop definitely has what you need. Now, I would say if you have a Rainbow Shop in your town to go and check them out, 75% to 90% of the time, they will have the items in store on their website. I've been able to find just about everything in store on the website, so it's almost guaranteed. I absolutely think that in the recent years, Rainbow has definitely stepped their cookies up. They got some really, really nice stuff. It has great stretch, and they kind of work flattering-wise, so you can find some great pants that are going to kind of cover your stomach up. You can find some nice flowy tops that are fashionably flowy that will really kind of accept you and make you look good like I said I would say go into the store try this stuff out you can definitely order online and return it it's not really a big deal they give you their return policy is pretty simple pretty basic but as far as being affordable they are probably going to be your best affordable kind of fashionable one fashion Nova is cool but the thing about fashion Nova is it's the process of ordering things online from them and not getting what you think you're gonna get fashion Nova has a very tricky material twist so uh, you think you're gonna get something out of certain material and it ends up being a very funky material so I would kind of say to you guys um, to kind of be you know a little careful with Fashion Nova especially plus size like you know 20 plus some things because sometimes Fashion Nova is not going to really have the right ones for the right body types but like I said Rainbow definitely has plus size clothes that I can guarantee you because I shot plus size for them before they have clothes that are very flattering and are very inexpensive all right people so that basically wraps up today's video so the winner of the giveaway is drum roll please so the winner of this giveaway today is I am Corey Rose I think her question was excellent um, I really think that that's a topic that I've been struggling with and besides all the other things which are really good questions as well I really kind of you know looked at her question and thought about it and thought about my life and you know you know dealing with negativity in general and life and stuff like that is really hard and you know coming out and putting yourself out there to the world is very very hard and that's something I deal with it's this is not something I personally thought I would be doing right now and it took me a lot of strength to come out here and show myself and then getting backlash from people I really had to build myself up and build my confidence up a lot and you guys have helped me build my confidence because you guys believe in me so I definitely thought that question was a good question so I am Corey Rose you are the winner of today's giveaway but it doesn't end there so because you guys asked so many questions and I really want to give a lot more you know I want to give someone else the opportunity to win something I'm going to actually do a second Q&A video and I'm going to do a second wig winner so I'm gonna give away another unit and my second Q&A video so what I need you guys to do in this video is actually leave your comments down below as well and in this comment section you're gonna ask me some more questions so I've answered as many questions from this video so try to go and ask you some other questions let's mix it around guys I really like this because you guys are getting to know me a little bit so I will um, do this second Q&A video next week and I'll announce the winner to that for that one so all you have to do is make sure you subscribe to my channel thumbs up this video leave your comment down below by asking me a question and make sure you share my videos guys with all your friends and family as usual so guys I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will catch you guys in a later one bye